In this session, we're going to talk about OEE. And it stands for Overall Equipment Effectiveness. And in short, what we're doing is we're seeing how efficiently we're running our machine. Now there's different ways to do that. And, and for many years we saw, um, you know, we took the, our run time, time we were actually running the machine, and we divide that by, you know, how many hours in the shift or minutes in the shift. Um, some some amount of time and that gave us this percentage figure and um, but it's not truly what you're doing because some of this time in the shift may have been a break and you weren't really running uh, it also could be that you, when you were running you were only running at a slower speed so that didn't take into account you know that um, and also quality aspects. So it really did not or does not represent the true efficiency of it. And then you get into different types of production and how do you compare one production to a, you know type of production to another type of production. So that method just really uh, didn't hold up water and it wasn't universal across many production environments uh, in different companies and, and not to mention different production environments in the same company. So um, overall equipment effectiveness was developed and uh, it's become, kind of become a standard and you have different people that modify the formulas to meet their their unique requirements in their industry. It's not really needed. I don't typically recommend it, but uh, you know, I guess uh, each has their own way they want to go about it, and and they can do that if they want to. Now, OEE is made up of, of three different components. So you have availability. Okay, and that, what that has to do with is your runtime. So this is going to be affected by your, your downtime. And it's going to exclude planned downtime. So planned downtime, we talked about that before. Um, lunches, breaks, safety meetings, times where you did not plan to run. It could be the line's just not scheduled to run even. That's planned downtime. If the line's down and you're not planning on producing production during that time. Uh, we have another item uh, in OEE. It's called performance. Okay, and that one takes a look at your production rate. And so, for example, if the operator goes up and turns the machine or process speed down, and they're only running at 80% of what they should, well, the machine's capable of that 100%. It's not producing that 100% it's less efficient. So if we just make things real simple, if we were supposed to be producing 100 uh, cases per hour and we're only producing 80, you know, really we are only 80% performance, OEE performance during that hour. It could be uh, uh, gallons, maybe you're supposed to produce 100 gallons, but you're only producing 80 gallons. Well you can't put as much material or product in the warehouse because you didn't produce as much because it was slowed down. And then the last one is quality. 
and quality can have a double-edged sword, but it's the same kind of concept as production rate here. If you wanted to produce 100, and um, while you know, maybe uh, 10 of those 100 were bad, then we only produce our, our uh, quality OEE figure is going to be 90% because 90% of them were good, 10% were bad. Um, if we produced 100% good, we can put them all in the warehouse. But if we only produce 90, we can only put 90 in the warehouse. So um, the, the, the reason it's kind of a double-edged sword is what do you do with these 10 bad? Do you rework them? Well, that takes resources. It's an expense. Or do you throw them away? Well, that, that's an expense because you, you lost that product you could have sold. So OEE takes all three of these into account. So overall, OEE equals the availability times the performance times the quality. And you get your overall OEE. So you're taking into account downtime, time that you uh, should have been running and you didn't for some reason on the machine. You're taking into account performance uh, by not running at my full rate. And you're taking into account quality because you're not producing 100% quality. So these are very, uh, very important to note that each of these are isolated. So if availability you, during downtime, it affects your availability, but your performance, you're not running, so it's not taking a look at the production rate. They don't both drop at the same time. Likewise, your quality, if your quality drops, you know, you're not producing product, but quality will drop and not performance. But if you're running, you're not in downtime, and you're producing good product, then performance comes into a factor. So they don't, they each change individually they don't change together and that's very very important uh, concept of OEE and then your overall OEE the other thing about OEE is it would be great to be a hundred percent OEE you are no downtime you're running at your your uh, standard rate and you have no bad product that's would be an ideal world and some industries, maybe you can achieve that, but they're probably not interested in OEE and tracking and improving. Um, some say that world-class OEE is 85%. That would be also very good in some industries, um, but it really depends on your industry. What we really want to do is take a look at OEE over time. So if we chart this, and we can do it different ways. I'm going to show this as a line chart, but it could be a bar, different things like that, um, percent. And let's say we have 80 here, 60 down here, and we're somewhere in between. And we're taking a look at the trend of ROE. Could be going up, could be going down. And we really want to just, it, you know, watch that and look for the trends and try to improve the prove it and get continuous improvement now each line in a facility might have a different oee um, each uh, area production area so packaging versus processing or something like that shipping could all have different oee figures and you can look at them independently or you can look at them combined together but we don't want to go, oh, you're not hitting 100%, something's wrong. That's not true at all, not how OEE should be used. And I've seen uh, actually in some industries or some customers where they've modified the formulas for OEE so that they can show 100%. Well, what happens if you improve and you're 105%? It really, that's not the intent for OEE. It's kind of a, a benchmark 
for your particular line or industry or company and you're tracking the change and looking for improvement.